predicting a disaster is impossible. But with God's guidance, you can certainly be prepared and help others make it through the toughest of times. How to Plan and Survive, right now on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burnus. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, where we help you to discover the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. I'm Jonathan Burnus. Surviving a disaster like the aftermath of a terrorist attack often depends on how prepared you are, both physically and spiritually. Our guest today is a disaster expert with years of experience leading emergency medical missions to some of the most troubled places in the world, like Somalia. Please welcome the author of When All Plans Fail, Dr. Paul Williams. Paul, welcome back. It's good to see you, my friend. Thank you. I want people to understand just what an expert you are on this. You actually helped Jewish Voice before I came, when it was Hero Israel, establish a humanitarian program for people in places we work in now, like Ethiopia and Zimbabwe. You helped to get it off the ground. You have years, decades of experience with yes. this. Talk about your background. Well, uh, I felt called of God when I was just even just a teenager to go into missions and then specifically into medicine when I was 16 years old. And the Lord actually gave me a, um, a vision when I was 14 years old of being in a place where there were many dark-skinned individuals around me and there was a man preaching up front and uh, people around me were raising their hands in praise to God. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, I want you to be a missionary. And I said, Lord, I'm willing to be a missionary, uh, but why was I not on the platform uh, doing the preaching? And the Lord uh, later on led me and said, I want you to be a medical missionary. And I realized that I was going to be a missionary different than what I thought a traditional missionary would be. But I went then over to Yamasuka Ivory Coast when I was appointed as a missionary with the Assemblies of God. And uh, this was in uh, sub-Sahara um, uh, desert in, in, in Africa where they had 1,200 leaders from all over Africa. And in one of the services, there was a man preaching up front and I was in the service with 1,200 people from all over Africa and they had their hands in praise and worship the Lord. I saw what I'd seen when I was 14 years of age. I knew I was where God called me. And subsequently God called me to work among the Jewish people out of Isaiah 49, 6 where he said, it's too small a thing for me to give you Jacob and Israel which I've kept back, but I'll also make you a light to the Gentiles and bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. It turns out that was the same verse that Paul the Apostle God used to call him to the Gentiles. Well, God used that same verse to have me work with the Jewish people doing Aliyah uh, back to Israel. So when we met and I realized what you were doing, the tremendous impact that you were having working among the Jewish diaspora, I said, we ought to have a medical component to that to be able to reach out and touch the people. You know, one of the most effective ways of bringing people to Yeshua is by meeting their physical needs. Yeah, now what's interesting is we were doing cultural events, festivals of Jewish yes. music and dance, but when you brought the humanitarian component, medical care, eye care, dentistry, medicines, all free of charge, we, we earned a, the right to share our faith. People saw that we cared and then they wanted to know what we knew. Absolutely. For, for me it was a delight that first time up in Gondar when the festival uh, that you were going to do fell apart. The plans for that fell through. You weren't able to do that. So the team from uh, your team joined with the medical team and you became part of the medical team. That was an absolute wonderful and that experience. And the first one in Ethiopia was just incredible. It and really we've been was. working there ever since. I want people to understand, Paul, that you have been at the forefront of providing care for people in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, Absolutely. showing the love of God in the worst places in the world, devastated by, uh, by poverty, and also in the aftermath of war, in, in the aftermath of genocide. You've yes. seen it with your own eyes, and you've seen how people respond to the gospel when they're cared for. Literally tens of thousands of people have come to know Jesus. Over in Bangladesh I was involved on the island of Katubia after 150,000 people were killed from a, a tidal wave that went over that area in Bangladesh and the, the tsunami that hit over in Indonesia and in Banda Aceh, a couple hundred thousand people died. We were among some of the first relief effort that went to that particular area. And it's a horrible thing to, to be in the aftermath of such devastation. Oh it is. Here, here's what I want people to see and, and I want this is what I want you to hear because you haven't 
uh, tuned in by accident. You're supposed to be watching this program today. We, we seem to feel like we're so far removed from all this, it could never happen to us. But it can. And in fact, Paul, if I'm reading the scriptures correctly, and we live in the times that I think we live in, it will happen to yeah, us. Actually, and you know what? I've been in 105 countries now. And no matter where I've gone, there is not a sense of peace. There's this sense of unrest. And I tell you what, that's where being close to the Holy Spirit, being close to God is going to help us know when we need to do something, go to a different place, uh, leave an area where we're at, and He'll warn us ahead of time. I really you believe You gave that. us a wonderful example last time, the story of Joseph. Yes. Who was the Savior for His people, a type yes. of Messiah. Yes. And He has the revelation that there's going to be the seven years of, of plenty yes. and then seven years of famine. And he is elevated by the, by the Pharaoh to the highest position in the land. This is our opportunity. Yes. This is our day to be a light in the midst of darkness. Absolutely. A disaster scenario. What, what do we need to do to prepare and to really be the light that God has called us to be? Well, first of all, it is individual preparedness, but then the second one is neighborhood preparedness and being salt and light there. But the other one that we haven't really covered a lot is getting churches, our churches specifically involved, where training can occur, where the church can get behind taking care of the elderly, the handicapped, the single parent uh, families, the moms that are by themselves. And the church needs to be able to reach out and help them. And the thing is, if you try to do it by yourself, you're going to have a lot more trouble. If you band together, you know, the Bible says very clearly that a three-cord uh, uh, rope is not easily broken. You know, uh, we need to help each other. The neighbor needs to come along with neighbor. And if we have neighborhood protection, we have a lot more protection than if we try to just do it by ourselves. This is really a message of hope, not of doom and gloom, not of fear. Don't be afraid, but understand we live in the time preceding the return of Jesus to this earth, which means financial uh, or economic collapse, uh, which means the increase of disasters and catastrophes, uh, wars and rumors of wars, which I believe is, is terrorism. Yes. And this is an opportunity for us to work together. So many pastors that are watching today need to actually develop a preparedness plan and plug into what already exists. Absolutely. There's already a lot ex that exists, right? Yes, in fact, well, actually, not as many as there should be, but one of the great examples is ADRN, Austin Disaster Relief Network. They have networked 130 churches in that area. They've trained over 3,000 people on how to respond to disasters. And so many times when disasters occur in that area, the emergency response teams will ask ADRN to become involved. And so here you have believers that will be getting involved helping these people. And they have adopt a family program so when certain families are devastated, churches will come alongside them. And they don't just start off preaching to them. That's not it. They preach by what they do. You, you know, when you see a man naked, hungry, or cold, you don't just say to them, God bless you and be warm, but you give them the things that they need. And then what happens is, and we see that in the medical work that we do with Jewish Voice and everything, it opens up their heart to Yeshua. And then they receive Jesus. But first of all, you had to give them something that would meet their physical need, help them in that way. Then they're open their heart to Jesus. Give a, we just have a minute left before a break. Uh, give us a scenario of a natural disaster, catastrophe that could take place in America and what that looks like. Well, uh, hurricanes down in Florida, for instance, is one thing I would uh, express to people. Uh, uh, un unfortunately, most people in Florida do not already have their supplies at home to handle a hurricane. So the shelves empty in Florida. They automatically should have all their supplies at home before a hurricane hits. And also, if it looks like they're going to be in a really bad area, they should evacuate and plan ahead of time. And I think the same thing should happen in other areas of the United States as well. Well, we have to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about practical things. We're not talking talking about preppers or, or, or hoarding stuff. We're, it, we're, we're not talking about an extreme. We're talking about very practical things that you can do to prepare. We have a quick break, much more with Dr. Paul Williams still ahead. And then later, we'll take you to a small village in Ethiopia that suffered for years without the benefit of clean water until God sent us to help. It is a remarkable, inspiring story that you don't want to miss. Terrorist attacks, disease, floods, fires, earthquakes. Will you be prepared when disaster strikes? 
Protect yourself and your loved ones with inside knowledge from disaster expert, Dr. Paul Williams. One of the statements that I like to make is be prepared, don't be a victim. His book, When All Plans Fail, helps you prepare for the worst. Learn how to survive catastrophe with this detailed guide. The Bible warns that in the last days, calamity will come. So don't wait. Create a foolproof plan for your safety. Take action today to safeguard those you love. Order When All Plans Fail now. And when you do, we'll send you another empowering resource, When All Plans Fail Workbook. Create your own personal plan to deal with disaster. Design a strategy that reflects the unique needs of your family. Be ready when trouble comes with all your safety checklists in this convenient workbook. Along with these two essential resources, we'd like to sow another special gift into your life. Where Are We on God's Prophetic Timeline DVD? Be ready in these last days before the Messiah returns. Learn what to watch for in these uncertain times. Rabbi Jonathan Burnus and end time prophecy experts reveal key signs you need to know. So wake up call for you right now. We'll send you all three of these vital resources for your donation of $40 or more. Your donation of $40 doesn't just provide three resources to improve your life, your donation helps improve the lives of Jews worldwide. You can help provide crucial medical, dental, and eye care to Jewish communities and their neighbors worldwide. You can help bring freedom from poverty, disease, and despair. These impoverished Holocaust survivors in Israel are finding hope and healing thanks to your donations. Most importantly, they are learning that their Messiah, Yeshua, has come. Yeshua is using you to bless these precious people through Jewish voice. When you donate, you fulfill scripture by sending the gospel to Jewish communities around the world, from Argentina to the Ukraine to Africa. There is so much more to do. The need is urgent, and we need your help. Remember, God said He will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Your gift of any amount will bless the Jewish people. But with your gift of $40 or more, you'll get these three essential resources that can bless you. Call the number on your screen now to partner with Jewish Voice. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. To receive your gifts, please specify offer 1803 when giving $40 or more. Don't wait. Call, click, or write today. Welcome back. If you just tuned in, uh, my guest is Dr. Paul Williams, who has written a very, very important book, and it's one that uh, I think you need to pay close attention to. When all plans fail, be ready for disasters. Now it's also a workbook, Paul, yes. and practical steps, yes. 21 days. Talk yes. about the workbook and the book together. Yes. In fact, if you follow that 21-day plan, you will actually be well on your way of being prepared to be able to handle uh, common disasters. And of course, if you're ready for your everyday common disasters that could occur or problems, you're going to be ready for more zebras that might come along, the unusual things. You know, Paul, it seems to me that there's two, kind of a division of two, two groups of people. First of all, the people that go to extremes. They yes. are preppers and they're hoarding things. They, they actually have maybe moved into the mountains even, mm -hmm. uh, stockpiling weapons, and they're getting ready for the last days. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they're getting ready for total chaos and disorder, going far on one extreme. The other extreme are people that are not paying attention at all to the signs, mm -hmm. and the idea of preparation is totally foreign, and we're just trusting in God, and uh, we don't really believe mm -hmm. that it's going to affect us, that we're going to, well, after 9-11, we kind of fell back into this mode where we're just living for the now, and you're, you're saying something that I think is relevant and, and solid biblical uh, grounding that we have to be prepared. Absolutely. We don't go to extremes, but we don't ignore the signs of the times either. Yes. We're living in a time where we're facing re the reality of terrorism and economic collapse and so on. 
and things can, things can really cave in quicker than we imagine, right? Oh, absolutely, and that's one of the reasons why I really think that the wise man does prepare because he sees different problems coming. But, you know, do you have an umbrella in your car when it's going to rain? Do you have jumper cables in your car? Uh, do you have a grab-and-go bag? You You're know? embarrassing me. <laughs> None of the above. Uh, because there's always somebody that will come to AAA or whatever. But all that will dis can disappear very, very quickly. Yes, and in fact, if a whole bunch of people need the help, it's not going to be there. And that's why you've got to be prepared yourself. Uh, one of the things I really encourage people, particularly run into a situation where we have less medicine, that one of the best things you can do is have good nutrition, exercise, and be able to uh, understand what alternative medicines are available to you. Because if we run into some of the very major difficult things, there's some medicines are not going to be We're going to go into practical things. You gave a great great example earlier uh, when we were talking, the, the, if you're on an airplane and uh, something happens to the plane, they tell you to, in the preparation um, message, to put on your oxygen uh, first, mask first, first so that you don't pass out and, and then you're able to help other people. So you, you first have to be prepared yourself, you have to get what you need to help others. The so. foundation of all preparedness is individual preparedness. And yeah. all disasters are local. You know, you, uh, you know, a disaster is when uh, something happens in our life, but it's, it's another mild problem when it happens to someone else. But when it happens to us, it's really a disaster. Well, I, I, I say this a lot. I heard this as a young believer. Everything God gives you, he gives with someone else in mind. I think it's yes. a great yes. statement that you're, we're to be conduits for the, for the yes. power of God, for the blessing of God. Yes for the provision of God. And what you're advocating here, Paul, is to get prepared so that not only for yourself, but so that you can be a servant, a, an, an aid, a blessing, the div God's divine provision for others. Absolutely critical. Absolutely. In fact, one of the chapters I have in my book is called Transformers because I really believe that God is wanting to raise up transformers, those that God puts on their heart. I want to make a difference in my church, in my neighborhood, uh, in my region. And so uh, it really takes a transformer, somebody that's called of God, and somebody says, well, I, I can't do that. That's something I should le let doctors do or nurses do or somebody that's involved in EMT work. I have found that many people who have a gift for organization may not have any professional background, but they're very good at bringing people together. And I say, if God's calling you and saying, I want you to do something in your church, then you could talk to your pastor, get your pastor to agree to it, and then you could have people come in and train people People and have a grab and give go. Give them the noise. book and workbook. Absolutely. Give it to your pastor. Now, you said something earlier that I want to restate. You give uh, things to prepare family and friends for gifts. Yes. Like you, just a simple thing like a water purifier, a life yes. straw, right? Absolutely. Just give it as a gift. Have a water purifier uh, for your family. Have water stored. Have some food. Have some medicine. Uh, just very, very practical things. Absolutely. In fact, one Christmas I bought buckets of food, uh, freeze-dried food. It, it was over $100 a bucket for the family. Uh, they said that's the strangest Christmas gift they'd ever received. But we also gave backpacks with had in there water purification uh, uh, bottles, also water tablets, uh, you know, purification but tablets. But it could be the best gift they ever received. Absolutely. It will be in the midst of a disaster, a crisis, yes. it will be the greatest gift they ever received, I'm, uh, physically, spiritually. Actually, it's eternal life. But to share eternal life, you have to earn the platform. Yes, and I found that sometimes young people just don't have the same interest in that area. They don't want to put their money in that area, or they think it's not going to happen to them. In fact, when you're young, you think you're going to live forever, ever. Now that I've got yeah. a little bit of gray hair on my head, I just realize how <laughs> short life is. You know. But we want to be prepared. But you know, we're not going to live here forever. Our goal is to be with Jesus, and ultimately He is our uh, bridegroom, and we need to get ready for Him, and we need to be looking forward to His coming. We do, and our, and our, our purpose on this earth is to fulfill the destiny. Yes. You have a destiny, by the way, and God wants you to fulfill that destiny. It begins spiritually, yes. getting right with Him, getting close to Him, spending time with Him, not treating God like a spare tire, but cultivating the, the ear of the, the spirit of our spirit to hear God warn us, get ready, do this, do that, go left, go right. 
we can hear God that way. Absolutely. In fact, the Bible says very clearly, what is the most important thing we do? And when Jesus was asked, what, what do we do to attain eternal life? And he gave them the answer of uh, loving Lord the God with all your heart, the Shema Israel, hear the Lord thy God uh, is one, and that you love him with all your heart and soul and everything in you. But like unto that, love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, if you do these things, you'll fulfill all the law and the prophets. You're going to do everything God wants in your life if you really look out for your neighbor like you look out for yourself, as you take care of your family. He says, he that doesn't take care of his own family is worse than an infidel. So we've got to be prepared individually. We've got to prepare our families and we've got to help our neighbors. Paul, one minute left, 21 day. You've developed a 21 day, day plan. plan. Give us yes. a 45 second overview of the plan. Well, in other words, well, it's 21 different steps that you can take. In other words, whether or not you're going to get food ready, whether or not you get your insurance uh, things in order, whether you're going to get things ready for school, whether you've gotten pet supplies ready. In other words, you've got to be able to take care of your pets. And a lot of people don't even think about their pets, but grab and go bags for pets, medicines for pets. There's even a website for pets. Uh, Pets911.com is one of the things they can go to. So <laughs> Very, very practical. Yes. Well, I'm so glad you've put it into a book. Uh, it, it, it's something we want to sow into your life as you help us to fulfill our mission to help people in desperate need when all plans fail. It's a book. It's a workbook. You need to be a doer of the word. Now's the time to prepare. We know the season is upon us, and we just need to be good stewards. God wants to use you to, pre to be prepared to help others, and ultimately when you serve, you have the opportunity to share the gospel, which is the most important thing that anyone can ever hear. So fulfill your destiny. That's what Jewish Voice is all about, helping you to fulfill your destiny. Well, imagine never having clean water to drink. It's something that we all take for granted. Until recently, the population of a small village of Jews in Ethiopia suffered from polluted water. Many of their children died or suffered sickness and disease. But now, because many of you helped, they have clean water. The story that you're about to see is an amazing example of what we can accomplish with your help. Shalom from a rural village here in northern Ethiopia on the outskirts of Tachgait. We're here with an entire community that identifies as Beta Israel. We've been able to commit this morning to providing every household in this community, which is 100 huts or households, with a family life straw. It's going to provide clean drinking water, no matter where the water comes from, for an entire family for an entire year. You can see the water they really did need, this filtration system. This is where a lot of the source of a, a lot of their health issues come from, is this very, very dirty water. We believe that Jewish Voice wants to bless this community with these life straw water filters. This one is for an entire family. However, we also would like to bless them with living water that is eternal. They had heard that Jewish Voice was coming to help. A lot of these people didn't make it to the clinic. So Jewish Voice is life straws to them. They welcomed us like we were brothers, which we are. And it was just so, so touching to be able to give. They were so hungry to receive. We're showing them how to use them so that they can have fresh water. And that's what the Lord is doing because the Lord loves them so much. Oh, we're just so, so blessed to be here. They just received us with their arms open, and they're just willing to, to hear the gospel. They're willing to receive them, and uh, it is such a blessing to be here. We're thrilled to be able to be a blessing in this way, and we've shared with the people that as they, as they take each cup of clean water out of this life straw, they would remember the Lord's love for them and the love of God's people for them and that they would remember we're praying for them. Terrorist attacks, disease, floods, fires, earthquakes. Will you be prepared when disaster strikes? Protect yourself and your loved ones with inside knowledge from disaster expert, Dr. Paul Williams. 
one of the statements that I like to make is be prepared, don't be a victim. His book, When All Plans Fail, helps you prepare for the worst. Learn how to survive catastrophe with this detailed guide. The Bible warns that in the last days, calamity will come. So don't wait. Create a foolproof plan for your safety. Take action today to safeguard those you love. Order When All Plans Fail now. And when you do, we'll send you another empowering resource, When All Plans Fail Workbook. Create your own personal plan to deal with disaster. Design a strategy that reflects the unique needs of your family. Be ready when trouble comes with all your safety checklists in this convenient workbook. Along with these two essential resources, we'd like to sow another special gift into your life. Where Are We on God's Prophetic Timeline DVD? Be ready in these last days before the Messiah returns. Learn what to watch for in these uncertain times. Rabbi Jonathan Burnus and end time prophecy experts reveal key signs you need to know. So wake up call for you right now. We'll send you all three of these vital resources for your donation of $40 or more. Your donation of $40 doesn't just provide three resources to improve your life. Your donation helps improve the lives of Jews worldwide. You can help provide crucial medical, dental, and eye care to Jewish communities and their neighbors worldwide. You can help bring freedom from poverty, disease, and despair. These impoverished Holocaust survivors in Israel are finding hope and healing thanks to your donations. Most importantly, they are learning that their Messiah, Yeshua, has come. Yeshua is using you to bless these precious people through Jewish voice. When you donate, you fulfill scripture by sending the gospel to Jewish communities around the world, from Argentina to the Ukraine to Africa. There is so much more to do. The need is urgent, and we need your help. Remember, God said He will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Your gift of any amount will bless the Jewish people. But with your gift of $40 or more, you'll get these three essential resources that can bless you. Call the number on your screen now to partner with Jewish Voice. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. To receive your gifts, please specify offer 1803 when giving $40 or more. Don't wait. Call, click, or write today. Whoever has done this to the least of these, my brethren, has done it unto me. You have it, an opportunity. If not now, when? Uh, if not you, who is going to help? Anything you can do will make a difference. Until you've actually been there, you can't imagine how moving it is. You have a divine opportunity to help. We want to sow these, these books into your life. It's a book and a workbook, and you need to prepare now. So we want to sow these into your life as you help us to help people in desperate need. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks to Dr. Paul Williams for being here this week. As I close, I want to remind you, as I do in every program, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible says they shall prosper who love thee. So if you want to prosper, pray for the peace of Israel. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Bernis saying shalom. And God bless you.